What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Rusty and we are back rebuilding the 2019 semi truck, the Volvo semi truck. We have done a lot of work to this guys. If you have not seen my previous videos, go ahead and check them out first before you watch this video because it's just gonna wrap everything up and show you guys where we are at with this project. Where we left off last was we replaced the EGR stuff right here. You can tell it's nice, freshly done. This was crushed in a little bit this way. We replaced this uh, fan ring and also the fan. So right here, it's ready to go. The next step is the cooling system. So with the cooling system, there's these brackets right here that hold the actual radiator and stuff like that. There's my brackets right here that I got from the used junkyard uh, Volvo guy and also this right here and the shroud. And we finally got the new radiator. I know that in my other video, everybody was commenting that why am I going with the aftermarket one? Why am I not going with the dealer one? You guys don't understand. The dealer one provides a original one, Volvo, and then they also provide an aftermarket one, which I got, but not from the dealer. I got it from somewhere else, but from the same place they actually get it from. But pretty much what a dealer does is they buy it somewhere else for like 500 bucks. They resell it to the customer for about 600 bucks. So. I cut the middleman, I went straight to the source. They kind of told me that their information where they got it from, so they kind of messed up there, which I'm not gonna provide in this video, but if you guys are wondering, just hit me up on uh, my email and I'll let you know. So this aftermarket one, it's actually a lot better than the original one. Here's my original crushed one. I don't know if you guys can be able to tell. There's actually a metal ring in here to support this plastic piece. And in this one right here, there is no metal ring to support this plastic piece. So the original one is actually a lot worse than the aftermarket one and also the aftermarket one comes a little thicker plastic right here i don't know what's up with that right here it's like circular and not really sure what's going on there so this one's slightly a little thicker but i have measured all my holes all my diameters and stuff this will fit into these brackets right here and also i know you guys are wondering about these little holes right here in the aftermarket version it comes with the this little cooler that's inside here. Uh, it could be used for power steering cooler, it could be for the transmission cooler, it could be pretty much anything you want. And lucky for me, I actually have a hose coming out of here, which I know I thought it was a transmission cooler, but it is not. It's actually rerouted all the way back here for power steering. It's the power steering cooler. You actually don't even need that, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and attach these hoses to these little fittings why not it's gonna have a, its own little cooler and i don't have to buy that cooler for 150 dollars. that's how much that little cooler costs and you guys might be wondering about why i have all these new little trucks here there's a older volvo right there we have a drive-in right here uh, my cousin's yellow banana truck right there and then we have that new cascadia if you guys are wondering about what's going on over here check out my previous video about the cascadia rebuild you'll you'll figure out why all this new stuff is here and we also have purchased the new condenser, the AC condenser. This is our old one that was damaged. Man, there's no way I was gonna, you know, repair this. So everything is right there, matches up right there to this aftermarket one, yes, aftermarket one, because guys, aftermarket is almost the same as original. Come on, give me a break. The dealer wanted $260 for the original one. I bought it for 125 on eBay. Shout out to the eBay seller. He's actually the only one on eBay that sells these for 125. Super good deal, reasonable guy, really nice. And also my intercooler. I had a lot of people stating that this thing is already bad, no good. Yeah, right, are you kidding me, man? I'm, I'm manufacturing anything I want. This thing is ready to go. Look how straight this thing is. It was warped, if you guys remember. I unwarped it. I'm not gonna go into details how I actually did that. So we're gonna go ahead and install these brackets and start installing everything. Alrighty, that didn't work. So for some reason it wouldn't fit down into this hole right here. 
and I just reviewed some of my videos. I actually had this bar off when I took out the radiators and this is what's in the way. We're putting it down and it's just like, I have to remove these brackets to get this radiator in there. But the whole issue is if I remove those brackets, these huge brackets on the sides right here are in the way and it's I can't put in the bolts to tighten the the brackets back up so i don't know what to do i think the best thing is i'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this it's only six bolts take this uh bar off and install the radiator then Whoa, that was a little harder than it looked on video, but this thing is all the way in. We have the little rubber bushings right here that goes and uh, handles this side. And then on the bottom, we also have these mounts right here. So there's a pillow here and then it goes between this bracket and a pillow there. So it has a little bit, a little bit of movement over time. So like the vibrations don't crack the radiator. That's why they did this. Also, I did the same thing on this side. I was missing one of these pillows, so I had to go to the dealer. It was 25 bucks for these little bushings right here. I know, 25 bucks for pieces of rubber. They got me, they got me good, but whatever. I mean, it has to, it has to be done. So next step, oh, and also, I already connected the hoses for the radiator. Man, this thing is solid. Man, it's coming together pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and start installing this intercooler that I have uh, warped back into shape. And this is the bracket that I was telling you guys about that's broken, it broke right here. This is how it's supposed to be. But it's okay. What's gonna happen is there's two bolts on top right here and two bolts on top right there that go right there. And this, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on like this and bolt it down and it's not gonna have any effect on the actual stability of the intercooler. It's gonna be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and install this and go ahead and install the condenser. wow look at this this looks so good it's actually coming along really really nicely i thought these bolts and stuff like that are gonna fit very very oddly but it didn't it actually fit very nicely uh, everything went on the way it's supposed to be there was no getter rigging involved there's my uh bracket that's broken right there look at this solid not even no movement at all this bracket barely does anything I mean, the condenser looks good. Everything looks OEM. I know this is aftermarket condenser. What does it say? LNQO2. I don't know what that is. Aftermarket radiator, but it looks original. I mean, you can't even tell. I think aftermarket is better than original anyways. So next step is installing these intercooling pipings or rubber hoses or whatever you call them. So I have one right here. This is actually original. It is not ripped, not damaged, anything like that. And there's the little brackets that come with it. As you guys seen from my first or second video ever, we were cutting this off because this got mangled, this got ripped, and this attaches right there and right there. So these do not come off. I'm pretty sure they don't. I'm pretty sure this is one whole unit right here and this, there's a clamp right here. So if, if that's true, if this is one whole unit, that means this is gonna be very expensive. Hopefully it's not gonna be too bad. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this piece right here take a picture of this just so I know what it kind of looks like and I'm gonna go to my used Volvo junkyard guy and see if he has this I mean if he has a decent condition one why why pay retail five four hundred bucks for this and I'm gonna call the dealer and see how much this is All right, well, I'm here at the Volvo Junkyard Guard and I already looked at one of these. He has one, but it's, I don't know, it's really old and rusty. I also got this sensor right here from him. I needed, it actually attaches to this pipe. I'll show you guys later. Uh, he actually gave it to me, but he says, yeah, he has this, but it's too rusty. So I'm gonna try to find a different solution.
Alrighty, back at the shop and let me explain to you guys something. First, I went to the dealership and I asked how much these were right here. He told me they were $84 a piece. Yes, you guys heard me wrong. For these silicone little things with these metal rings is $84 a piece. I was furious. I was like, there is no way these are $84 a piece. So I was like, okay, I don't know any better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my used junkyard guy. Maybe he has this whole piece for me. And he did, but like I said before, it was pretty ratchet. It was old and rusted. These metal rings were rusted. This pipe was rusted. My Volvo is new. I don't want that kind of crap on my Volvo. So I'll, I went back to the dealer and I went to another guy and I very already learned that from the Volvo dealers. You just go to a different guy and see what he says. And yeah, I bought these and guess how much I paid for them? I paid $55 each for them. The other guy quoted me $30 extra per piece, which I saved $60 just because I went to somebody else. I don't understand the process at Volvo dealership. I don't know if I should put a huge complaint on them or something like that. I don't know how they work, but this is ridiculous. I can't believe they can just upcharge somebody $30 per piece because they feel like it. I can't believe it, but whatever. I don't know if I should do anything about the dealership right now, but I just wanna get you guys to be aware of this, that the dealer is fraudulent. They are scammers. Anyways, so, what are we gonna do with this pipe? We are going to cut these tabs off. One, two, three, four. We're gonna cut these off and we're gonna put regular clamps on here. That's how you replace this right here. So, and I went to my junkyard guy. I did get a new sensor. The sensor comes right there. My sensor, let me show you guys. This is my sensor right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it is damaged. It was on top of it right here. And I guess when the impact hit, it kind of bent it and broke it right there. So it's easy, it's plug and play down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that, but I'm gonna go ahead and grind these off, replace the couplings and start installing this thing over here. looks really really nice i love how it ended up looking it looks oem as heck i also changed the sensor already this one does not move around that's good and it was funny because i was actually blowing air into here and <laughs> it was like turbo noise as heck it was kind of weird i looked in there the turbo was slightly moving even if i blew a little air in there the turbo was slightly moving so that was pretty impressive i don't know i also already installed this side and this one easy this one was oem already and i did not have to change this out it wasn't ripped or anything like that so i just had to place it back up secure this everything's secure on this side and we're pretty much done with the inner cooler radiator part all we have to do is actually put the reservoir over here i'm not gonna go do that there's four bolts here and like two bolts over there i'm not gonna put that i'm not gonna put the coolant in yet because it's really really fast stuff and i'm just gonna do that a little later the other thing that i want to address is i had oil coming out of here when i took this clamp off there was a little bit of oil there so pretty much when this engine was upside down or on its side oil started leaking into this pipe and it settled right here and there was oil right there and if you guys do remember when i started this thing in i think episode three or four there was oil and a lot of smoke coming from the exhaust and you can guys you can actually see some oil residue right there leaking from here so i'm gonna go ahead and take off this exhaust piece and check how much oil is in here and if it's a lot i'm gonna go ahead and clean it out it's not a big deal uh just because it was upside down or the oil seals leaked and it, and it you know went through the exhaust it happens it usually burns everything off and it should be good to go but i just don't want it to get to the depth filter i just don't want it to the oil to soak into the depth filter so i'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this part first and see how much oil there is and then i'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this and that part just to check it out surprise 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 there is oil right there i actually took off the other side and there is oil right there let me show you guys the other pipes so it's filled with oil it's not as bad as i thought it would be but it's 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 full you know the actual inlets and stuff like that but it's not really a big deal because i'm just gonna clean them out with brake cleaner 
and I'm gonna clean out as much as I can from there. It'll burn off whatever's left in there. And I actually stuck my hand in here and all the way down. I thought this pipe goes in and goes through the filter right here and goes down. There's a hole right there where the filter is. And, but then I looked over here and I was like, what the heck? It comes out of there. So technically the exhaust runs this way, goes down this hole, comes all the way down and then exits here and then goes through the filter this way and then comes up. So even if some oil did get in there, it's all the way on the bottom there. It's like a catcher or something like that. So that's awesome. Not a big deal. My filter is like pretty much brand new, so I'm not gonna touch it. I know it's bent right there, but this is because of the accident. I had the little cover on here that's damaged. The only thing it damaged is this little, this little thing here. And I'm actually, I'm gonna take this out for you guys and show you what's in here. So the filter is out. It's like a half filter type of deal. You go in this hole, what the heck, there's another filter. <laughs> I have no clue how to take this one out. I don't really want to touch it. Maybe it's like a permanent filter back here. So pretty much the exhaust fumes goes through here, through the secondary filter, and then it comes out there. So that's pretty cool. I guess that's cool how they designed it. I don't know if you guys know about the older models. The older models had this ugly system where there's a filter here and a big extraction thing right here. And it was a pretty big system. I guess they made this more compact, probably even more expensive, that's why. But I'm gonna put everything back on. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the pipes out with brake cleaner, try to clean them out as best as I can, put everything back on. Ah! Freaking A. Freaking cut my finger open. Mother At least I'm gonna have my blood, sweat, and tears into this project because this thing, <laughs> This thing is starting to kind of make me mad because I don't have a cab yet and I've been hurting myself on it. She's, she's a bad one. She's a bad one, but at the same time, very, very good. All right, it got the exhaust all cleaned out inside there. I did kind of break my finger and put some tape on it and I got some blood on the exhaust, but it's okay. Blood is good for this truck. It's a resurrected Volvo anyway, so it needs some blood on it. But everything is done like right here what i wanted to do for today this guys was a three to four day process i know it seems pretty short for you guys because a video can last 10 to 15 minutes but for me it's like three to four days i know it seems like i didn't do a lot of work but i did i had to go get that from the dealer i had to run around it rains here just like randomly as you guys can see from that puddle and then all of a sudden it's just so humid and hot and i have to go in there and take shelter i mean it's a long process here for me guys but little by little it is coming along look at what we have already done a lot of people have been asking me why am i assembling everything except the cab portion of this rebuild why is because i do not have a cab yet obviously come on guys i know there's a bunch of semi trucks here this is an old volvo cab right here obviously i'm not putting this this is a 2019 this is like a 2002 i mean i have cascadia cabs right there and right there it's just i do not have this body style this is a 760 vnl body style volvo 2019 even 2018 they made those but i cannot find them anywhere the only place i could find them is copar and i have this other place that i'm looking at you guys are up for a surprise for next video I'm not going to give it away too much, but the process is going to go way quicker. We did assemble everything on the front end, everything that we should for like the cooling system, the starting procedure of it, stuff like that. We did start this thing before already. If you guys seen from, I think, uh, episode three or four, little by little, we are going to get this thing done, guys. Do not worry about it. Well, I'm gonna have to end this video here for you guys. We have done a little bit of work for you and I need to go check my finger out because this is my third uh, tape I put on this finger and I think I already lost a pint of blood and I feel kind of woozy and it's hot. So I think I'm gonna have to end it here. I appreciate it for watching guys. Please stay tuned with my other videos. I have a bunch of trucking videos and there's a little special video coming up too if you guys can guess what it is. But yeah, appreciate it for all the love guys and stick around. This thing will be road worthy very soon. Deuces.
Been safe, hard in, but I found it, homie, been cracked. Hey, yo, we been back. Your band stacking, see?